Today's guest is Charlie Johnson. You may know him on Instagram as Charlie Johnson Fitness. Um, he has close to half a million followers on Instagram and uh, is one of the number one online trainers in Europe. He's transformed over 8,000 clients. He's an international speaker. And what I really appreciate about, appreciate about Charlie in this episode is that he is so honest. Um, he's sharing his own personal journey, being overweight as a kid, and what it's like to achieve a high level of fitness and also what it's like to achieve a high level of success in the fitness industry. So if that's something you're interested in, you'll definitely want to hear this episode. I think for anybody though, if you partake of social media at all, you'll be interested to hear Charlie's perspectives. He's sharing what it's like to put yourself out there. You know, it is a high degree of vulnerability, putting yourself on social media. And so he's sharing some of the lessons that he's, he has learned along the way and just some of the things that he has learned that don't serve people in their fitness quest. You know, we're getting into that and what it really takes. And I, I really also appreciated how he got into, um, just some of the, the ego that we find in the fitness industry and how that's not necessary, uh, definitely resonates with me and some of the messages I've been sharing lately on social media as well. So, um, I think you guys will really, really enjoy this episode with Charlie Johnson. Let's jump right into it. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults and their nanoparticle size minerals. So, um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios. Right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount onto you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system and I get a lot of questions because, um, it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. Um, that's our deep dive psychologically. And after the 90 days, you go to the next level, you start doing what I'm doing currently. And it's a lot of strategic goal setting and it's really, really honestly, miraculous what's happening, not only in my life, but in my clients' lives. Like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them. I'm like, do you see yourself? Like, do you see what you're doing? That is so cool. So anyway, that is um, for me, the bread and butter of my coaching. I love it so much. Um, also though, in, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, aura ring. Um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles. Do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? Um, so 
that's that's how I approach things in higher. There's more. We do prizes every month. Nikes, Lulus, um, all my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated, to keep those habits up. We do three Zoom calls a week so you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and, and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest. And it's just, yeah, it's like... I created my life and I created my life the way I like and I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives and it's an honor for me to serve them in that. Um, so I just thought I would tell you about it because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're like wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So. Uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. Um, it is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time, but if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com and you can request a call and we can see if, if it's a great fit for you. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about higher so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily. And if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my keto in and out program, um, on my website. Site. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. There's a 60 day course teaching you how to do keto or 30 days of keto. And then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, um, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes and all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. All right. So Charlie, thanks so much for joining us. And I'm excited to get your, um, wisdom on this podcast. Cause I, I, I caught you on a face or Instagram live and I, I kind of, I don't know, <laughs> you don't know this, but I, I kind of probed the waters. I was like, I want to see, I want to see this guy's like mindset around things. Cause I specialize in ketogenic diet, but I'm not tied to it at all. Like I use it as an intervention tool to try to get people back to balance. And I asked you about it and you weren't, <laughs> you weren't the typical, like, Oh, keto so stupid. Blah, blah, blah. You're like, you didn't have the, the ego. I was like, so I appreciated that you were just like, well, here's what, here's what I think works long-term for people, but you didn't just sit. So I was like, okay, this guy's cool. Let's talk. <laughs> he gets it. So I was wondering, um, you know, I guess keto is a great way to, to, to get into this. Cause a lot of people have these beliefs about things. Like if I eat carbs, I will get fat. And I think both of you, you and I are living proof that you can eat carbs and not be fat. Um, but you know, what are some other common beliefs that you see people have around fitness and getting in shape that you think holds them back? I think a lot of it is the same as a lot of things in life is people's, um, limiting beliefs about themselves and that they don't feel that they have, they don't actually believe in themselves that they can achieve, um the body they want the business they want and they ultimately hold themselves back like a glass ceiling thinking that it's there that doesn't really exist um and i would say that's probably one of my gifts is helping people smash through that and see past that because it, it's almost like unlocking the door uh, for people and like it's like the penny drop moments when they realize like oh you can eat carbohydrates and suddenly like the world's not going to collapse and you, you're not going to gain tons of body weight and it's interesting you mentioned for that question on that IG live because I, probably, I must put it quite politically correctly because uh, <laughs> it, it can sometimes be taken the wrong way. But because like I don't personally tend to advocate keto for most people because I right. like to have a sustainable approach. And my first question to everyone is like when they're doing, oh, I'm doing keto to lose weight. It's like, OK, cool. Do you like carbohydrates? My first question, because if it is, I'm like, that's probably not the first choice of thing I would do. Um, so I would say the big thing that holds people back is just the, the limiting belief. And I think the second thing would be, it's not, it's not like the general public's uh, fault. It's unfortunately the media puts out a lot of BS out there and the supplement companies and mm -hmm. all this crap. And it's so frustrating because mm -hmm. there's like, people can't see the wood through the trees because there's so much misinformation. Yep. And they don't know who to believe. And you must get that on a daily basis. Oh, it drives me. I rant about this all the time. It's, it's frustrating when you have people come to you and they're, they're like running in circles with all this information that I'm like, you don't even need to know that. And that's like, we don't even know if that's true or not. And you're living in this crazy paradox, this crazy belief system that's causing you to feel disempowered. Um, so yeah, I feel you on that. And I, 
I love what you said about belief. Um, I interviewed another coach. He has a coaching company out here where I live and he was um, a drug addict for a long time. I just did a podcast with him recently. And he, I mean, all the way like heroin, meth, like he went all the way. Um, and he's been sober for quite a while now. And he talked about the thing I loved, the, like one of my favorite points in the interview was he said, like, what actually got him there was like, he had the desire to change a bunch of times. Right. And a lot of people have a desire to get fit like a million times. Right. But he said, what changed it was he actually believed he could. <laughs> so, um, could you speak on that a little bit? Like, um, on how you help people get there on the belief? I think a lot of it is just making it relatable to the clients as individuals and, like on un- like it sounds corny but like uncovering their why because everyone's like oh guys like oh yeah i want to get abs but like okay yeah w- why-, why do you want to get abs is it because you want to have more confidence do you want your wife to have sex with you right. again you want, right. like what what is it you actually want what is the yeah. the end product of having the abs you want um so that's the first thing i try- we truly try and narrow down with people is like okay what's your goal and like why do you want that specific goal like and how much does that mean to you and then how, when, how often, we're sorry, real quick. How often do you find people have like, know that right off the bat? They don't, they don't like it's, ever. Right. Yeah. It's, you, it's like a, you can see the, the cogs turning and they're like, Oh shit. <laughs> that's why. Um, yep. And it's, that's, that's when the penny drops and they suddenly realize the value to this. And then it's when it's not hard work for them and it's not difficult for them to stick to it because then they actually understand oh, that's why I want to be in shape is because I want to be alive to see my daughter get married and walk down the aisle or whatever it might be. Right. Um, and, and that's when people are like, okay, it's more than just working out because it's about fulfillment, happiness, and also about the other people within your life, not just yourself, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I have a, a mindset coach. And one of the things that he says I love so much is that when it comes to like your goals and your values, whatever you truly value, you will choose that your values will always win out. And so when somebody is like in that situation where there's donuts and brownies and all the things, but they know they have that clarity of what they value most. They're like, do I want donuts and brownies or do I want (laughs) to see my daughter go down the aisle? You know, like it, that helps people latch on to something when, and I love, I love your point on that. Cause it's like, if they don't have that, then in the moment, they don't even really know what they value. They're like, right now I value donuts. <laughs> donuts sound like a very important value to me right now. <laughs> um, and here's the saying for you. It's like, you're, like this is something that I actually posted on Facebook today. And it's uh, your life is purchased by where you spend your attention because like what you actually invest your awareness into is where you'll get results and where you will have progress within life. So if you're constantly getting drawn to negativity and pulled into negativity in this world, which to be honest with you, like I just said before the podcast, I've had a pretty shit two days. I'm now in Istanbul where I wasn't supposed to be and I've been in a pretty bad mood and I'm trying to get (laughs) myself out of that. And people, obviously we have a lot of issues going on in the world at the moment. Like it's not necessarily the easiest thing for people to be, uh, not everything's plain sailing, but it's learning to try and pull yourself back onto course to the positive positive so that makes sense yeah self self self-coaching right do you have any insights on that on um how people can coach themselves through the difficult moments better the first thing you need to just come down comes down to being self-aware so um one thing i would suggest everyone does is they and it's quite a harsh thing to do because there's often people closest to you who want to hold you back is to try and cut off and maybe minimize the amount of time you spend with people who are negative uh, in your life so yeah like respectfully probably not listen to this like a lot of my family members can be like that even like my parents although i love them dearly like they have quite a, a negative fear-minded uh view of the world of scarcity whereas if you have an abundance mindset you have the attitude where i can do anything i want i can achieve anything i want i can like for me like success in life is and all i've ever wanted is to be able to do what i want when i want with who i want that's like mm-hmm. total freedom um and then the same from like a nutritional point of view is to be able to be like okay i want to be able to perform great look great and then like eat what i want within reason and have freedom in that respect Mm -hmm. and my body to be able to move and i've got a this vehicle for life that i can enjoy and that's again really something i try and empower men and women with because 
um, when again they understand the why of working out and why being healthy is important it's because like you only have this one vessel for a certain period of time and you want to try and look after it so you can like enjoy the roller coaster of life as much as possible oh yeah <laughs> that's definitely how i feel okay i want to i want to dig in to you a little bit more if that's okay <laughs> so you grew up in england yes england so uh sorry just outside of london okay and so I'm curious what the catalyst was like your, so your parents, you know, grew up in scarcity. My, a lot of our parents did like the economy in most of the world just like was not what it is now back then, you know, and I, 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 there was no internet, there was no psychology really, you know, people just didn't have that kind of awareness. So like what happened? Like I've, we've, you know, if you guys go to his Instagram, you can go to Charlie Johnson fitness and you know, you've, you've obviously you weren't like born with like abs and muscles and you know, well you were, but not to the point of hypertrophy that they are now. So like, what was the catalyst for both like your body and your mindset that took you from being raised in scarcity mindset to like, hold on, I can do whatever I want here. So this is actually a very, very interesting conversation. So you, you spoke earlier about, about like how to really um, help yourself level up and something I've done recently, which has made a big difference and something a lot of men particularly aren't, aren't uh, open to doing is working with a psychologist. So he's actually a transactional therapist, I think is the te technical term. So for me to get a greater understanding of myself and the way I think, because um, it sounds a bit odd, but I'm quite robotic in terms of my thought process and a bit emotionless and a bit of a machine in terms of like, do this, do this, do this, and just try and structure a routine to try and um, like run my life. And uh, he almost started to unravel the onions, the layer of the onions, like of my uh, childhood and things like that. And that's where everything like revolves back down to. So for example, I was overweight when I was younger. And one of the things that came up with him was that I overheard my parents saying that I was overweight. And that's always like something that's almost scarred me in my mind. Right. And I didn't really change anything. Like I tried to change probably from 16 to 24. And I was like, I was like, everyone probably listened to this. I was working out all the time. Uh, I actually spent probably spent more time training then than I do now. And I just wasn't getting anywhere because I was doing the wrong things. I was putting all this energy into the wrong direction. A little bit like we were saying earlier, because there's so much misinformation out there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I personally take it very passionately in terms of um, getting frustrated for other people when I can see they work, but then they don't get the progress they make, if that makes sense. So um, that's very much probably what's driven me in terms of um, from like improving my physique and learning that because I'm not necessarily genetically gifted. I've had to learn the hard way because I've done all the stupid stuff everyone does, like you know, cheat days and all that crap, um, which people think is a good idea. Um, so that's very much what I would say in terms of a uh, physique and fitness side of things. And from the rest of my life, uh, like in trying to be successful, quote unquote, um, a lot of that all comes down to trying to prove a point to my parents as well, came out from speaking to the psychologist. So uh, seeking approval. Mm -hmm which when you start to like, when I was on the call with him and he worked this out, I was like, holy shit. Like I've never thought about it in that respect. Mm, I, I love what you're saying here. I do a lot of um, coaching with a coach who does the work of Byron Katie. Um, yeah. And so it's a lot of um, self questioning. And one of the questions that it, she asked in that process is when was the first time, when was the youngest that you remember feeling that way? <laughs> that is such a powerful question. And, and I, I love that you're, um, I love what you're saying. And I, lo I love that you're sharing that so vulnerably because this is how I see it. Like I follow a lot of success mindset people, right? Like I want all up in their minds. I want to see how they think, you know? And one thing that I've learned from people who have achieved a lot of success in life is that very often it's rooted in pain. It's rooted in proving it's rooted in some sort of trauma and trauma is relative. Like trauma could be, yes. Like hearing your parents say to your brother, like, wow, you are so much better at this thing you know, or something. Um, and that you, that belief system sticks. But what I, what I've learned is that what I think is so cool about it and speaks to the human experience is that 
who's to say that that wasn't perfect exactly as it is, because that through that pain, look what you were able to create. You didn't even realize it was coming from that place. Like you, you were just on autopilot. Like this would be awesome to do to get super fit and build this big business. But through that, you've been able to help thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. And now you still have that window of opportunity to heal and learn, but you learn, you got all those skills along the way, you know? So I always tell that with my clients, I'm like, un quote unquote, unhealthy motivations, like just don't just let, allow your path to go the way it is, because maybe that was for a purpose. Maybe that was to help you get to where you're trying to get. And then once you have those skills and you can heal, like now you've just reached another level in life. So Anyway, that's just my thoughts on that. Um, another thing I say that in terms of a, a drive perspective, there's quite an interesting conversation is, and again, this is something else that came up is that I'm very much driven by fear of failure rather than seeking success. Mm. So like, that's what pushes me more than anything. Cause I feel like there's a burning fire underneath me and I'm trying to stay above it. Right. And like, like John, the guy I work with is like, okay, this isn't really a good way to think about things but it obviously works for you. So I don't really want to disrupt it. Right. But, uh, you just need to be aware of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I interviewed another like really successful entrepreneur recently on my podcast. And that's what he was like. I've learned that some people are faith driven, visual, you know, visualization driven. Like that's, that's me. I'm driven more. Like I, I meditate a lot and I get these like images and I'm like, I know that they're going to happen and it just, I drive towards it. Cause it's like, I've already seen it. And he's like, but there's some of us who are more fear motivated that we're running from certain things, but you're exactly right. It's like, I feel like there's so much, um, shaming, unnecessary shaming. It's just kind of like, you know what, <laughs> like allow people to be in the place that they're in. And as you continue to do your inner work and heal, you know what I mean? Like you can, you can still take the skills that you've learned from that place and apply it in your life and become healed. That's, that's how I see it anyway. But yeah, everyone's kind of coming to success from a little bit different place. I think the one thing I'd say is that like, people need to be more open and honest to talk about their not psychological issues, but their mm -hmm. what makes them who they are. Because I think mm -hmm. more so with men that they're very, very afraid of opening up and talking about that, which is mm -hmm. why, again, this is something I want to try and vocalize more. And I talk about a lot now. It's just that like life's not necessarily easy and like everyone has the challenges, like no matter, even look at like someone like Britney Spears, for example, like is a perfect yeah. example. So people would have looked at her from the outset when she was looking and whenever she hit fame, 16, 18, like the woman's got the world. However, people don't see the pressure that necessarily comes with that and maybe the problems that come with that. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean that someone's happy. So um, one of the good things that, he, that this guy I worked with asked me was like, okay, so um, like I said, okay, these are the goals I have when I was 35. And he's like, okay, so what you can do when you do that? And then you've got all this spare time. And I'm like, right. And I was like, mm -hmm. then because this is the, the reality of the world is that when most people like in particular like i've competed before for example not that it's necessarily my gig but like people set this goal of like okay i'm gonna do a competition or photo shoot and then when you've done it there is i can't quite describe more of a vacant feeling afterwards you're like oh what do i do now that literally is the feeling i don't know if you've I'm had anything similar I'm so I just did my first bikini competition three weeks ago and I'm doing another one a week from today at the time of recording this. I've always been actually quite opposed to that industry. I did it as a as professional experiment because uh, I work with a lot of post competitors and that is why I've struggled with it is because what you're talking about, they're like in limbo kind of, cause they've got this, uh, well, they have body dysmorphia most of the time. And they've also got, they, they, they're lost. They're like sailing on the seas of like, I don't really know how to make this a sustainable lifestyle. Um, but I would say in, in general, um, I always tell, I always tell my clients, I'm like achieving your goal is going to be the most underwhelming moment ever. It's not that exciting. I achieved my goal weight. The first time I achieved my goal weight and I stepped on the scale, it was like, oh, 
now what? <laughs> okay. Well, here I am. You know, it's, it's actually, it's, it's, it's the excitement, I think. And it, you know, uh, who says this, I forgot who says this quote. Oh my gosh. But it's like, it's not the goal that matters. It's who you become in the process of it. And I think that's what most of us are after is the growth and the journey. So it's like, don't forget to enjoy that part. Cause it's the best part when you actually get there, it's kind of like, Neh. it's not it's that exciting. Okay. Here's a very good, uh, something I want everyone to take on board and think about with everything in life. And this is something I'm trying to think about all the time when I get frustrated or I feel like things aren't moving fast enough is um, when you're scaling the mountain, sometimes you need to stop and take a look back and enjoy the view. Because yeah. think sometimes how many people would, be, uh, would kill to be in the position you're in. Yeah. Um, like, particular now like in the uk for example gym has been closed for like four and a half months so even for someone just had the opportunity to go to the gym a lot of people would probably be like all over, all over it so uh and then some people can't be even be bothered to work out so it's um that sometimes i think is quite a good way to look back look at things and just think about like you sometimes also need to see how far you've progressed so even for example say if you're a guy and you've you've you're, you're 100 kilos and your goal was to get to 70 kilos and you've got down to uh, 90 kilos then like take like like happiness and fulfillment that you've made that first progress and you've already mm -hmm. lost 10 kilos and then you can look at scaling the rest of the mountain because the problem is like with everything in life and say competing and all these other things is that it's almost like a, a constant battle of false summits you you right. set a goal you get there and you're like okay now i feel unfulfilled because it's never as good as you think when you get there and you're like, okay, what do I do next? So then you look for another goal and you're right. just in that hamster wheel. Well, and the other thing too, is like, we're reward driven beings. So if we're never giving ourselves that moment of reward, like, so you achieve something and you're just like, yeah, whatever next. It, it, it actually, I, for me, I feel like it, it, it decreases performance. Like once I'm like, yeah, girl, good job. You freaking did that. Mm -hmm. I want to do it again. It makes, I want, we're still like little kids with little gold stars on our charts at, in elementary school. Like I'm like gold star, gold star, gold star. I like giving myself gold stars because it makes me want more gold stars and it's fun that way. And it's self loving that way. Instead of this chronic, like not enough, not enough, not enough. It's like, yeah, girl, I, I just did the other day. Like I, I'll fully vulnerably admit, like there was a, there's a huge influencer I follow on Instagram. And I was like, dude, I know my physique looks so much like hers. If I do a little bit of tweaking, I can get right there. And I saw a video that I released recently and I, a few posts down was her. And I was like, did it, did it, did it. I was like, good job, girlfriend. You're like, I tell myself who, that. Who, you know, you can't say it. who was it now? No, I can't. Who it is. <laughs> Don't ask me to be that vulnerable. God, no, I'm not saying it. <laughs> So anyone who, anyone needs to tag this just to to their stories on Instagram, and we'll put some pressure on you to tell oh us. Oh my god! Doing. Okay, fine. I'll say. I, okay, not exactly, but pretty close. Her glutes are definitely better than mine. But uh, Sonata Greca, I don't know how you say her name. She, she's got like a million or two million followers on Instagram, but it's pretty close. I was like, good job. <laughs> um, let's talk about that for a second because you've got you're pushing half a million followers on yeah. Instagram. I don't know what you have on Facebook. Is that also a large uh, following? 150,000, I think. Uh, okay. So what, like, what has that journey been like? I always say growing, being a social media influencer is like one of the biggest personal development journeys a person can go through. <laughs> like you have to learn a lot about thick skin, letting things go. Not everyone's going to like you. Like, can you share some insights on what that journey has been like for you? Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. So I was, I'm going to break it down to a few stages. So like initially, stage one, everyone's like, who do you think you are? Why are you posting this? Why are you posting photos from top off? Like, And you're just married. you're probably your own fear stories. They're confirming them for you. So, yeah, so, like you're <laughs> yeah. so, so you're only limiting beliefs and self-doubt. <laughs> then people are just throwing that at you as well, which you like. Sure. Right. So like, well, this is interesting as well, because when I first started using social media and started like doing like online coaching because people were coming to me, I worked in a full-time job at the time and loads of people were coming, were like, like wouldn't say it to me, but in like the gym I was going to at the time were like, would say to my friends being like, what's Charlie doing? Who does he think he is? Like, uh, he's got a wife. You shouldn't be doing this sort of stuff. Posting photos with his top off, all this sort of shit. Right. Like, yep. Now I see that I, I, I occasionally I see these people and then like, 
that we don't have to say anything we just look and i'm just like yeah fuck you like that's why i didn't swear from a lot of us um, <laughs> no you're fine we, we swear you know, you're like <laughs> like they know and i know i'm like yeah it's like I, I know what you used to say um so like <laughs> that that is the one thing as well like you have to be very thick-skinned with anyone listening to this like if you have a goal that you want to go and achieve something don't let someone say you can't do it like okay you, you want to be the fastest person in the world and run 100 meters like realistically it's not gonna happen but however but like if you if you want to try you want to go all in and you want to try it go for it that's on you like right don't let anyone else say you can't do something um would be the first thing i'd say and then like that's probably the initial journey i think of social mm-hmm. media that everyone gets and people are like mm-hmm. oh you've changed why are you doing this now why like you must have had that Yep. And your worst fears will be confirmed to you. Exactly what you think is going to happen. Yep. That's going to happen. And I, I think what helped me the most was like, for me, it just, I was like, it's not about me. It's, this isn't about me. Like I, I feel called to what I'm doing. Right. So when I can let that go, I'm like, you know what? And <laughs> on your note about the people at the gym, I like being real, like drove past a, a, an old neighbor where they were like big time haters when I first started influencing fitness. And I drove by that guy and I was like, I cannot believe that I ever cared what that guy thought of me. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, but I'm like, I'm so, who cares what he thinks? Like he's not involved in my life. Like I'm like helping all these people and living free. And it's like, man, like just know it's going to come, but just let it go if you've got your vision like go go but the, yeah it's that you can expect that p- your worst fears are going to get confirmed to you <laughs> yeah I I all right say, next like, phase the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> next phase is when you start getting the trolling phase and you start you start probably getting a bit of traction and you probably for the first time you start getting random people you don't even know start abusing you mm-hmm. or like dming you shit or whatever or it probably like i don't really get this as a man I would imagine as a woman, you probably get a lot of um, uh, unsolicited messages. I'll put it like that politely. Um, like that is a new learning curve of, again, getting thicker skin. Mm-hmm. Um, because I probably get uh, an abusive message or comment a couple of times a day, I reckon, at the moment. A couple I times a day. I, wow. Yeah. So what do you do? Some, I just ignore them or block them. I block, block I them. Block but um yeah me too i uh i would never respond because well this is a very good example for anyone who is an influencer uh a friend of a friend who had about half a million followers in the netherlands someone trolled her gave her a load of grief and she like bit back and then he reported her comment and she got account disabled <laughs> uh, and her whole livelihood was like instagram so oh my gosh yeah that's why like personally i'm big into like i only want to focus my energy on positive stuff so if something's negative, I don't want to know about it. I'll just delete it, block it, and like goodbye. Um, if you want to waste your own conscious energy, like throwing shit at other people, then great, go for it. But you don't build the biggest skyscraper in town by like pulling down all the other ones. So people need to have focus on themselves rather than negatively on other people. And I actually, this is an interesting point because I noticed that a lot in the UK fitness scene that some of the like quote unquote older guard who are maybe like late 30s early 40s they tend to like to post a lot of stuff with like negative connotations or like a lot of people mm-hmm. in the fitness industry do would be like or say for example they'll say like why you shouldn't do keto or um, yeah. they'll talk things down rather than explaining the benefits of things they might so like instead of saying um like keto shit you don't want to do it you might say okay uh, maybe keto's not for you because you want to do a sustainable approach to like carbohydrates like they won't tell the benefit they'll just tell the negative of everything um mm-hmm. I don't know if that's something you come across. <laughs> I'm smiling because I just wrote a post about this like yesterday or the day before. Um, so there's a movie called Pain and Gain. It's like a silly yeah. comedy movie. And he's like the, the there's a guy who's like a personal development motivational speaker, but he's kind of like a total a-hole in the, in the background. But he has this little phrase that he says that I love. <laughs> and it's, um, do be a doer, don't be a donter, right? And it's like a cheesy thing where he's like, do be a doer, don't be a donter. But I'm like, actually for real though, that's, I love like that. Like, because in the fitness, I just wrote about this. I'm like, we don't need a bunch of posts saying like, you're doing it wrong. Stop doing this. Like constantly. It's just like, Help that people. just, it disempowers people and it makes them scared. It's like, just teach them how you think they should do it. And then they can go try it. That's it. We don't have to sit here and like slam everything. Um, or like overwhelm people with 
tons of random information about like, you know, I, I gave the example of like, why am I getting asked by the general public about peptides when they don't even eat healthy? Like, why do they need peptides? You know? So anyway, yeah. Um, but I have noticed I, that's interesting. You mentioned that age demographic, um, I, I definitely see that. And I, I surrounded myself with those people in the fitness industry for a while, the, the egos, the, and the strength coaching and hypertrophy coaching communities are full of it. And it, it's just all this, like, this is the right way. And if you don't know how to do it like me, then you're an idiot. You know, it's kind of that vibe. And what I've noticed is that their, the energy of their following is very disempowered. They, 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 they've kind of become like codependent. It's like a weird codependent energy towards that coach of like, Oh yeah. Like whatever you say, like, that's the right way to do it. And I don't like that energy in the client. Like, I believe it should be the other way around. I believe our job is to help empower the client and help them see like, well, how does it feel when you do it like that? Close your eyes, feel it. Okay. How's that feel? They're like, Oh yeah, got it. Right. So then they leave empowered instead of being like, well, Tara says you have to put your elbow at 34 degrees, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I, it, this actually reminds me of another way. So uh, moment, moment, I get uh, slated a lot for like exercise. Like I'm not, my exercise execution is pretty good. And uh, a friend of mine, unfortunately tore his pec um, rather dramatically when we were filming for YouTube with Larry wheels and it went super viral Oh. So now whenever I do an incline bench press, I get slagged off saying, of oh, the form is incorrect. You shouldn't be doing this. And I'm like, it's not. And, but you know, like, and I literally, I say to them, I was like, what's the, what's the goal of this exercise for you? What are you trying to achieve? Because the way you do a specific movement is very much objective of the outcome you're looking to try and achieve. And that's mm -hmm. very much the way I coach people is I have an objective approach to everything because like, okay, cool. Like what, like what is the end goal of every single train session, every single exactly. set? Whereas people go into things like blindly in life, like oh, I'm gonna go work out. It's like, okay, what are you trying to achieve with this? You're just working out, like, do you know what I mean? Yes, like biggest mind bender ever. There's not one right way to do a squat. There's not one right way to do anything. Every, so many of us are caught in right, wrong thinking, right way, wrong way. And it's like, guess what? If you want to bias your quads, you can squat a certain way. If you want to bias your glutes, you can squat a certain way. And, and everybody's bone structure and body is different. So there's not like, you can't take some 300 pound, like giant guy with totally different hips and me and put us in. It's like, this is the right way. Like it, it's, it's, what are you trying to achieve and how can we do that with your body to help you get there? So yeah, I agree hundred percent. That's, um, that is probably one of the most, most frustrating things I see. And again, as you said, where everyone takes everything so literally that like, oh, uh, I actually, I, I respect him. He's very like, Cassim Hansen, for example, says you should do an incline bench press like this. And it's like, yeah, that's awesome. That's for whatever like result he's trying to achieve. But if someone's, I don't know, say for example, a strength athlete, they're probably going to have a slightly different approach. Like for, and it's not, it's something um, a guy who helps me a lot. My training called Nick Loft says it's like not what you know, but it's what you can prove a lot of the time. So, for example, I in this session with my friend Torres Peck, we were training with uh, Larry Wheels, who's obviously phenomenally strong. And I saw Larry warming up, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like that's interesting form. But it's like I'm not going to say anything because he's doing. He did five bent plates on an incline bench press. I did three. So you know, like okay, that works for you. You, you go for it. Like, that's cool. And I'll stick to my things. Like people should learn in a lot of things in life, like stay in your lane, like with what you're trying to objectively achieve. And if someone has a slightly different path, let them do them and you do you, if that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> um, so I went through a phase of, it was when I was first a uh, trainer um, and I was already like really fit, right? I had kind of, I, I felt like I was in a great groove. Like I was happy and empowered and like, I wasn't tracking my food. I was just living a healthy lifestyle, getting great results in the gym. And I um, started to learn from all the experts, right? I was like, who are the best in the world? I'm going to go to get a bunch of certifications and go to camps may or may not include someone you just mentioned. And as I learned from these experts and I, I totally drank the Kool-Aid. I did what like a lot of the general public does is like, oh, the way I do everything is wrong and the way they do everything is right. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to get completely out of my power. I'm just going to do whatever they say. I lost a lot of mu muscle mass and gained a lot of body fat through that. And it took me honestly, like a couple years of like 
<laughs> restoring my self-confidence of like, no, Tara, guess what? When you do your, when you do it like this, that's how you feel it. This gets you results. You already know what gets you results, right? So there's, there should be, I feel like it, a, a certain level of professionalism it's, it's beyond just giving people the advice and tips and tricks and biomechanics. It's also making sure that they are in their power and empowered and that they have, they are doing it in a way that makes sense to them and that they feel it. So like that guy, you're giving an example of like, for you, you're like, what the, <laughs> that looks so weird the way you're doing that. But I look, like you said, look at the results. Like I look at somebody who has like massive pecs and I'm like, dude, whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> like, you know, so yeah. I think <laughs> it's one that. of those things. And that's again, um, uh, interestingly in terms of self-development, I'm actually naturally a very introvert and quiet person, like spending a lot of time on my own. And that's why I've always been quite a big believer in the sort of the two, e uh, two ears, one mouth approach in terms of like particular mm -hmm. coaching. It's like, listen, listen to what people say like mm -hmm. if they say something that works for them or they feel something better a certain way like yes you can try and guide them to try something else and if they try that and they don't, it doesn't work for them or they feel it doesn't work for them then you should listen to that generally would be mine and this right. is something dangerous obviously but um you, you people need to be more involved in a two-way process in terms of coaching and helping people get results rather than a like which is one thing that frustrates with a lot of other people is it's a very two-dimensional this is the only way to build yeah. muscle or the only way to build fat. And it's like, that's bullshit because realistically, like I could come up with a, a Mars bar diet tomorrow. It'd probably make loads of money. It's probably a really good <laughs> idea and be like, okay, you can eat like, I don't know, you can probably eat six Mars bars a day. That's all you eat. And you lose like tons of body fat. How's that sound? Cool. Let's do that. Like <laughs> it, would, it would work for a while. Um, <laughs> it's still horrendous. I would never recommend it, but like, you, get my, you get my drift of where I'm coming from. Totally. A hundred percent. Um, what was the third phase? Did we hit that? Your third phase? Uh, no, we haven't, we haven't got to that bit yet. I would say the next bit, now this is going to start slagging people, slagging not people, but the fitness industry up a bit. When you start to go like up again, I think into the fitness industry, you then start to get lured into like the, the influencer. Th like I, This is actually probably the biggest insult anyone ever gave me was I think someone called me an Instagram influencer uh on like dm or something and i was like i had to send him a video message like wait hold, like hold your horses my friend like i've got a lot of other shit going on i'm definitely not an instagram influencer i don't like get paid to post and all that sort of stuff um but the big thing i think when you go into that realm is you suddenly realize how fake all of it is and social media and how it's a charade and you start to meet these people who you maybe idolized before and you looked up to and you're like what i thought you were like this is bs and like and you suddenly realize a lot of them are narcissistic pricks to be respectful um i'm not my name anyone but like, i'm just being honest and that's like i'm just a real person and i and i can tell you are and I just try and come across as as it is and that's what frustrates me most about like social media and the la la land of it all and that's what particularly instagram that's why i quite like podcasts long form content like this because you can put your um, personality across more and who you are yeah. um, rather than like people need to understand particularly Instagram is the highlight reels of people's life. Like everything is airbrushed and pho like photoshopped. Like you're not going to put a bad photo yourself up. Like, like let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember meeting a, an influencer that I had like really, um, followed closely and admired when I was trying to learn how to get fit. And now like I, anyway, I ended up meeting her as like a professional colleague and she like admitted to me that she photoshopped all of her pictures <laughs> back that like made herself look thinner than she actually was. And I was like, I mean, I, I was just like speechless. Like I didn't know how to take that when you're face to face with someone, you're like, Oh, Okay. And I was just like, you know, the, the wool gets pulled off of your eyes. I think you're right. Like, and I mean, I'm a no, my following is nowhere near where yours is. Like I have like 25,000, but like, even still just like, I guess, knowing people in the biz, like I, I have definitely learned there's, there's, there's different camps, you know, and there's the people who are completely okay with taking advantage of other people like that. They will not even bat an eye on that. And then I like, yeah, I had to go through that process too of like, I want to, of course I want to be successful, but that's like taking advantage of people is not 
successful to me. Like I would also like to be able to sleep at night and know that I made an impact in the world. Like that's also success, not just money and followers. So yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. The second caveat I'd say to this as well, this just sounds like I'm demonizing the fitness industry um, and influencers is like, I'm all up for people having a drink and having a good time. Um, but like when, like I like to lead a healthy life and practice what I preach and that's what I share every day. Like I love training, love eating healthy, I love like learning. But when like you see quote unquote like instant influencers who like they look awesome, but all they do is like go out, drink, do drugs, uh, do whatever, you know, you're like, it's so dis but then the next day you see them in expo and they're like, uh, they're with all their fans who are fanboying and you're like, it's so disingenuous. And when you see it from both sides, you're like, you it just it, I can't the first time I saw that I can't even because I was newer to the fitness industry a bit more green in I couldn't really quantify how bad it made me feel if that made sense just for the facade of it all yeah yeah I I've had like both experiences personally and I've met some where it's like you you talk to somebody you're like dang you like you live what you preach actually you're not even showing as much of like how how many good habits you have and how real you are you know there are those people too and I I find you can kind of tell if you if you listen to your gut if you listen to your intuition you know what I mean like you can tell somebody's heart (laughs) by the way they're coming across you know so I'm going to give an excellent example of this. And this is a, a name drop. So uh, have you heard of Joseph Rakic? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, I was going to Thailand uh, and we were messaging on uh, Instagram and he was, he was going to the same time. So he, we booked him to go to the same hotels. So we could train together and do some stuff weather. And um, I told my wife, like, oh, this dude's like coming. He's got massive following, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so literally went and sat down at breakfast the next day. Um, he turns up at breakfast with like a packet of microwave rice and two tins of tuna and gets the like guy to eat it up and you know instantly i'm like not necessarily people like this who should do that and i was like i was like fair play like yeah <laughs> like literally you know and you're like instantly respect because like you practice what you preach and for me right. that's like as soon as i see that i like you are very genuine to what you preach and you you're the way you help and educate people and um you know, again joseph actually used to get married today is funny thing um, oh that's cool um he like my wife was like oh was that guy you're meeting like it wasn't what i was expecting at all because he's so down to earth and like normal mm. and that's like it's just a great example of someone who practices what they preach and when i find someone like that mm-hmm. when i first meet them like i just buy into people like that straight away and just love them yeah because you know that he's like so much of his intention is like he knows he has something and he wants to share that with other people yeah. right there's like there's two different ways i was actually thinking about this um randomly before our interview i was like there's it's kind of becoming like um trendy or popular to want to be a coach right especially like a fitness coach and i guess if anybody out there listening to this this is this is what i was thinking that i'd love to share is like make sure that it's not about you make sure it's not about your ego like i'm going to be a superstar coach that's famous and live on the beach while i work remotely like if that's your intention if it's about you you're going to suck just being real. And you're going to turn into one of those people he's talking about. But if your intention is like, first you have to have something don't like, I truly, and I know, you know, too, like, I know deep in my heart, like, I know that a lot of people would like to live the way that I live. I know I've got something to share. Right. And so because of that, I do, and it, and it's a fit and it gives me confidence. Cause I'm like, I know that I have value to share with people and insights because I'm living it. (laughs) I'm living it. You know, I'm doing this bikini, like crazy thing right now, but that's not my normal MO. My normal MO is yeah. Like I get joy out of nourishing my body too. So yeah. Um, I think like, I don't know, it's important to examine in ourselves, like what are the motivations, right? Like, yeah, you're going to have to see yourself and believe in yourself and all, you know, there's going to be some self-work, but if your deepest motivation is to share goodness with other people and help pull them up and fan their fires like man you're gonna have such a more successful and happy journey as well the one thing i say that as well is it's very easy um for anyone listening as they go up through instagram or whatever they're doing for the social media world to get led astray because like you can get people get very much dra- dragged into the vanity metrics of like oh i'll just post like a thousand ab selfie like ab video mm-hmm. ab- selfies with abs out and you get loads of likes it's like 
cool that doesn't necessarily help you and I remember one of the best things someone said to me he was actually my first business coach mentor and he was like your Instagram content it makes you look like a narcissistic prick and I was like I looked at it and I was like I can sort of see your point and then, <laughs> like because you have to look at the way you're perceived from the outside if people don't know you and Mm -hmm. I, I still sometimes find it difficult to maybe put myself across how I want to come across, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, uh, me too. It's a, a difficult one because you can get portrayed like yourself. Obviously, you, you nice looking lady, uh, apply it in an English way. And like people can like, like assume, make assumptions of you and they make, make assumptions of me and they like, and people don't know you, they don't know me and then they make assumptions straight away. And that's what mm -hmm. frustrates me. Mm -hmm. And like, it's easily done and I do the same thing and it's something I'm trying to uh, unlearn that bad habit but mm -hmm. I think we should give people the benefit of the doubt more times than we do probably if that makes sense yeah I love that yeah like just yesterday I got a message from somebody saying like she was like she wanted a she wanted a refund because from my program because she didn't like how I was earning my value through my body with my bikini competition and I'm like no I like I'm not doing that. It's like, I'm trying so hard to tell you that I'm doing a self experiment and I'm driving into the hole, you know, but it's like, man, you post a selfie, like people are going to take that how they want, you know? So yeah, it's, it is, I'd say you're, you're right. I agree with you that like these longer format, like videos, it's like, I feel like I can get my soul out a little bit more so people can see where I'm coming from versus like a, a selfie shot. I mean, that's I, I, assumption mania. So you mentioned that that gave you a lot of shit. I'm going to say one that I put a post up that caused like uproar with other like influencers who are in the industry, who, you know, the sort of people I said before, who were very negative about um, putting things down. I put a post up and actually to be fair, it was a little bit of a negative post, but I was trying to, it was trying to spin it in a positive way. I basically said that um, guys who, had, who have dad bods have failed the younger versions of themselves because when they were younger, they aspired to look like action heroes, not like being overweight which mm -hmm. is realistic because mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. like, I don't know, you're 12 years old, 14 years old, you, you look, want to look like James Bond. You want to look right. like uh, the Terminator, yeah. whatever. Like you don't want to be look like Homer Simpson. Like let's yeah. be straight up. It's tough love, so, it's, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and then that, that's all I, I, I was trying to say and in the caption of saying like, you need to set a higher standard for yourself because mm -hmm. when you were younger, that's not who you aspired to be. And you need to have a bit of a wake up call. But some people just cannot take sometimes the whole, I know. The whole truth. And like, I want people to be brutally honest with me. Like, even if it's going to crush my soul and upset me, I'd rather you said like, yeah. look, Charlie, you're, you're shit at this. Like, just go and do something else. Like I know, for example, um, I haven't got the genetic capability to go and win classic Mr. Olympia or something like that. So I'm not going to put my life and soul into that because it's not going to happen. Uh, and people would probably even tell me. And it's the same thing with that. Like people need to be able to take uh, constructive feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And it's, you know, uh, we, ah, it, it's such a sensitive industry that we're in because I find that, and I've really honestly been trying so hard to be able to like put this into words and I don't think I've actually found them yet, but it's like, there's this confusion, like the spirituality, the, the, the connection between like being spiritual and being confident and, and loving who you are and knowing that you're not your body. And then this, but also the simultaneous desire to build your body and have a nice physique and to be free and to, you know, not have excess body fat. There's like a lot of confusion there. And so I find that like, if I, you know, it's weird. It's like, if I, I could probably build a bigger following and get a lot. If I, if I was just preaching a bunch of like, you're perfect the way you are stuff, but the real reality is like, I work with people one-on-one -on -one and I know you're not okay with how your body is. And if you truly understand that you aren't your body, you can look at it as feedback instead of looking in the mirror and seeing a bunch of belly fat and being like, Ooh, gross. What's wrong with you. You can actually just say like, that's not me. This is just the vessel that I'm in. And my current choices are getting me that. And I don't want to have that anymore. So I am powerful enough to change that. But people sometimes aren't ready to hear that message. They're, they're so associated with their body is their value that they hear you say something like that. And they're like, oh, oh, like, how dare you? And it's like, no, cause we work with people one-on-one -on -one and we know that deep down you do want to change it. You're not okay with how it is. So we're trying to help you get there. And sometimes you're not going to like what we have to say, but it's the truth. <laughs> and, that, and that's right. I don't care anyone who's listening. 
anyone if you're overweight you know you're not happy i know <laughs> fact yep. uh, and again this is not being like if someone for example is struggling financially you're not going to be happy about that and it's like people say oh right money, money doesn't matter i was like i'm pretty sure it does matter when you don't have it like it's, it's always very relative and again as money isn't everything in life and your body's not everything like money doesn't like necessarily bring happiness or fulfillment and then also like sometimes I've been the most like I look back now and I was like the most unhappy with the way I looked when I was actually looked my best like I I got so even a few months ago like I was in really good shape I tend to do like shoots normally always every year on my birthday just it just seems to be a habit now and like in December I was like I don't know I just wasn't I like I looked insane but I I look back now and I was like I wasn't happy at the time and it's funny how you can get led down the garden path and people will look up to you look up to me and they'll be like oh he's got everything he's got to be super happy you should be over the moon with that um but you again it comes to what we were talking earlier about scaling the mountain you get to one summit you're like okay this is um don't feel any different i don't feel fulfilled let's get to the next summit and you then get into that paradigm of chasing uh the sunset and that's not where happiness will ever find you because happiness will find you um within fi- enjoyment from the process and again <laughs> I'm, I'm not slagging off keto we come back to the process of making it sustainable and you be able to enjoy your lifestyle with doing things to then get to the end goal which is what i try and showcase in terms of my life with what I do that I can go out travel enjoy myself and I can still uh, do everything I want whilst um, achieving my fitness goals if that makes sense yeah I think if we get our intrinsic value as a human being wrapped up into our achievements then we're going to be miserable because it's never going to be enough. But once we truly like know when we, we do that self work. So we, I'm really big on meditation and lots of personal development work and seeing my own shadows and my clients do that too. But like once, so my symbol for my coaching, you keep talking about climbing the mountain. So it just keeps making me think, I love the mountains. I live in Utah where there's so many beautiful oh, mountains. It's like good. epic movie scene everywhere. And they've been so healing for me and I love them. And I'm a stri- I am a climber, a striver, like a go-getter. Like I always have been ever since I can remember, you know, like I just freaking love, it's just more fun to achieve and do cool shit to me than to just like not. So, but what I've learned that my symbol is it's, it's going up a mountain and then you go inside and there's an Eagle that flies out of the center. Because if you want, like, we think that we have to just like strive and strive and strive and strive and strive. But if we'll go inside and heal that stuff inside, we can fly higher than any top of any mountain, way higher than we ever thought possible. And so you speak of like, going, you know, uh, being unhappy with your body or being unhappy with your income. It's not that being fitter or being richer is going to make you happy. It's that relationship with self that you know, that you can, that you have what it takes that, that you are so powerful. That's not what gives you the value. You give yourself the value and then you can see that you are capable of doing all of those things. And I think that brings us back to your original point of belief in yourself that's where it all starts <laughs> so and, yeah and that's when you've got a an unlimited limitless life when you suddenly realize that everything is within your own conscious control in your decision yep. if you want to become a pilot you can go and do that if you want to go and move to australia you can do that if you want to do whatever like right ultimately your life is an accumulation of the choices you've decided to make and yep if you're not where you want to be, then that's probably because of some of the choices you've made. And it's now up to you to make the right choice for the rest of your life, if that makes sense. Amen. I'm going to end on that note because that's so powerful. Um, Charlie, where do you want people to find you? What do you have going on? What's, you know, how can they partake of Charlie Johnson Fitness? Um, So if you want to find out any more about me, uh, main platforms, mainly Instagram, so you head over to me there at Charlie Johnson Fitness. Feel free to drop me a direct message with anything fitness related you want any questions with um i've also got my own podcast we've got tons of cool guests and i think about 160 episodes now which is called uh the shredded show so if you just type that in on podcast app and uh, spotify uh and then i've also got my um uh, youtube channel i've got tons of stuff on there something cool which i, I can send you the link for as well as so i've just finished a new uh, ab training course uh which is completely free and you can maybe put that in the podcast notes if anyone wants yep. to download that 
uh, that's sure. got free free trainings on pod, um, on uh, app training, which can be very, very helpful for people. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we'll link that in the show notes. Charlie, thank you so much. Good luck in uh, Istanbul, you said you are right now. Yeah, Istanbul, totally. All right, you got this. Find joy and gratitude in Istanbul. Thank you. Thank <laughs> All you. right, thank you.